Hello everyone, welcome back to Open Euler mini course. I'm Irene, and today I will introduce the BPF map and BPF trees, two key techniques used in the Linux kernel. Before we start, let's do a quick rundown of BPF, which stands for Berkeley Packet Filter, a computer technology that allows efficient capture and filtering of network packets. Originally developed at the University of California for the BSD system, BPF was later ported to Linux and has since become a widely used feature of the Linux kernel. It supports filtering packets whereby a user space process specifies which packets it wants to receive through a filter program in the form of instructions for a virtual machine. This program is then interpreted or compiled into machine code by a just-in-time JIT mechanism and executed in the kernel. Next, let's discuss how BPF is executed in a kernel. BPF programs are first written in a restricted subset of C language before being compiled into bytecode. Then, the compiled BPF programs, which can be attached to a specific network interface, socket, or process by using the BPF attach API, are loaded into the kernel's interpreter, during which data is shared between the kernel and the user space by the BPF map. In essence, the BPF map is a data structure, providing storage of different types for data shared between kernel and user space, and can be accessed by BPF programs. It stores various types of data, including integers, strings, and pointers, and is particularly useful for performance analysis and security monitoring as it allows for efficient and scalable communication between the kernel and the user space. The BPF map can be used to collect and aggregate data such as network packets, system calls, and kernel events, and implement various types of filters, counters, and histograms. This slide shows several storage types available and I will make a brief introduction to the hash and array types. Hash types were introduced in kernel versions 3.19, 4.6, and 4.10. In versions 3.19 and 4.6, BPF map type hash and BPF map type per CPU hash provide general purpose hash map storage, where both the key and the value can be structs and the per CPU hash provides a separate value slot per CPU. In fact, the per CPU values are stored internally in an array. In version 4.10, LRU semantics are added to the hash tables. When the hash table reaches its capacity, an LRU hash map automatically removes the entries rarely used. Meanwhile, array types were introduced in versions 3.19 and 4.6, respectively. Both of them provide generic array storage. The key type is an unsigned 32-bit integer, 4 bytes, and the map is of constant size. To create the BPF map, you first need to install the BPF compiler collection BCC toolset on your system. Then create a new file for your BPF program and include the required headers at the top of your file. So far, so easy. Next, you will need to define your BPF map using the BPF map dev macro. This macro has two arguments, the type of map you want to create and the name you want to give to the map. The example here creates a hash map with a maximum size of 1,024 entries. Once this is done, you can define your BPF program function, which will be executed whenever a relevant event occurs. For example, when a new packet is received and last 
compile your BPF program using the Clang compiler and the BCC library before loading the program into the kernel using the BPF tool command. And just like that, you can interact with your BPF map and view its content. The previous operation explains how to store data in memory using the BPF map. But now, let's look at Linux Tracer for analyzing performance problems. Many Linux performance tools are counter-based and have limited visibility. Consider I.O. stat or a command line utility that gathers and reports input-output statistics. This may tell you your average drive latency, but not the distribution of this latency. However, distributions can review multiple patterns or outliers, either of which may be the real cause of your performance problems. This brings us to the analysis tool, BPF Trees. Since Linux 3.18, the Linux kernel has been equipped with an extended BPF virtual machine with 10 64-bit registers. This is simply known as eBPF and is typically used for non-networking purposes, such as for connecting eBPF to trace points. Running on eBPF, BPF trace delivers dynamic tracing of Linux systems, making it easy to write eBPF programs thanks to a simple and expressive syntax. BPF trace allows users to write scripts that can attach probes to various events and collect the data from the kernel and user space. A probe defines an event that triggers the execution of an action, which in turn defines what to do when a probe is triggered, such as printing data, aggregating values, storing variables, or calling functions. BPF trees supports many built-in functions and variables that provide excellent tracing and analysis capabilities. You can use BPF trees in either one-liner or scripts. Here are some examples that help you to understand how to use BPF trees. The command in example one helps list the probes, which is implemented by BPF trees L. Example 2 prints a welcome message. Run it and then hit Ctrl C to exit. The begin argument is a special probe that executes at the start of the program, similar to aux begin, and it is used to set variables and print headers. And in example 3, the command summarizes syscalls by process name. The at sign denotes a special variable type called a map to store and summarize data. You can add optional variable name after the sign, like at num, to improve readability or differentiate between maps. The brackets are optional, but with them, you can enter a key to be set for the map, much like an associative array. Lastly, count is a map function that counts the number of times when it is called. Well, that brings us to the end. This is just a brief introduction to the BPF map and BPF trace, which I hope you found helpful. If you are interested in Linux kernel or OpenEuler, please visit our six and stay tuned for more mini courses. Thank you for watching.